Well, we certainly have some updates. And oh my, the plot thickens. So I'm sure most of you have seen the video previously that I posted about the uh, news that Slipknot had departed ways with their drummer, Jay Weinberg. It's something that I found out very abruptly last week. And yeah, it was kind of a little bit of a shocker and also kind of made me really realize that Slipknot is, yes, a failing band. Now, all speculation aside, we don't know what happened. We don't know the real inner workings of what's going on. We can try and assume, but we really have no clue. We don't really have any inside information besides for what's been told to us by outside sources that are either on here or on other news sites and whatnot, or just by making assumptions and generalizations that may not even be true. Regardless of that, Every story has two sides. And I think now with this second side being opened up, we can get a little bit more of a uh, better idea as to what exactly is happening. For those of you who don't know, I made a video about this last week, the day after we got the news. D Slipknot decided to part ways with Jane Weinberg due to creative differences as they very loosely framed it. We discussed in last week's video that, yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that Slipknot did in the event of creative differences that allowed them to part ways with a lot of their founding members. And to be honest, it, they really ended up doing them dirty whether or not it was for financial reason or for just absolutely crappy reasons like not checking up on a medical condition that was actually going on and assuming it was a drug relapse or even just other things like contract issues and whatnot with this new information that we just received today i think we can make some better assumptions about what's going on in slipknot and just kind of how crappy it is so without further ado uh let's dive right into this about five hours ago jay weinberg finally released his statement responding to what's going on with the whole slipknot controversy of them basically saying, hey, Jay's no longer in the band. He made a post on Instagram. It was about five hours from the time of filming this, which puts it to about like four o'clock, 4.30 in the afternoon. It's gotten a lot of comments. It's gotten a lot of likes. And Metal News right now is just starting to eat this up and start getting it started. And Metal News is starting to eat this up and getting it started. Now, a couple things actually transpired for me in the past week. For one, I dropped this video. It actually ended up doing pretty well. I went live on Instagram with Rockfeed News which was a little bit of a shocker and also a surprise for me. I didn't expect that to happen. Me and the man talked about it for a little bit amongst other things like, you know, hey, you're also from the 757 area of Virginia and oh, hey, you know, working out and diet and stuff like that. But when we talked about the Slipknot News, we did both agree things are very strange. Things were handled very fishy. It's weird that they deleted the statements and even had comments on and then turned the comments off. It's all just a very strange ordeal and I don't quite understand what's going on with it. And I think they're doing it on purpose, you know, trying to stay mysterious. Just as every story has two sides, we now have the second side of the story coming out from Jay Weinberg's perspective. There's not really a lot that's said, so there's not necessarily a lot that we can draw from. But I think if we read close enough in between the lines, we'll be able to figure out some uh, some information and at least make some uh, nice conclusions that we can kind of get, you know, safely without, you know, making up too much stuff in the meantime. We're going to go ahead and read the statement, and then we're going to read some of the comments over it afterward, and we're going to get some more information out of this. All right, so going ahead to read the statement. It's posted on his official Instagram. No, I don't follow him because this is my personal Instagram that I'm looking at it through. My personal Instagram is kind of where I focus a little bit more on, you know, the people that I've met and, you know, built connections with throughout high school, you know, the music industry in my local area and or just, you know, political stuff that I don't really talk about on here. So, you know, obviously, I'm sure you guys can probably guess, you know, based on the apparel that I wear, but it's just not the place for it on the YouTube channel. That's all. All my personal stuff stays personal at that point. Anyway, this is on his personal Instagram, Jay Weinberg, and the statement goes as such. Sometimes I wonder what it would be like to pay a visit to my wide-eyed 10-year-old self falling head over heels in love with a new and exciting sound and culture and tell him about the last 10 years. Even on the hardest days, I'd like to think that he'd be stoked about the adventure that was in store for him. I was heartbroken and blindsided to receive the phone call that I did on the morning of November 5th, the news of which most of you learned shortly thereafter. However, I've been overwhelmed by and truly grateful for the outpouring of love and support that I've received from this incredible community I consider to be my creative and artistic home. This is not the ending of the journey I dreamt of and committed myself to seeing through. Not by a long shot, but despite the confusion and sadness, there is something that's proved to be an equal amount of comfort. For many of you reading this, 10 years ago, we weren't acquainted, and now we are. For that, I'm thankful in many ways I'll never be able to fully express. I love playing the drums. I'll always love playing the drums. I'll always have a passion for music, art, and creative expression. Nothing will ever change that. I don't know how, and I don't know when, but I look forward to creating loud, passionate, and heartfelt music that we enjoy together again. Until then, please know, it's been the joy of a lifetime to spend the last 10 years with you, sharing in our love for this special corner of the music and art world. This isn't the end, 
and I'm thrilled to discover what the future has in store for us. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and just kind of break down. So obviously the first part, yeah, it's talking about like if he was 10 years old, which by the way, he was a massive fan of his dad. I'm blanking on his name right now. Do forgive me. He was the drummer for Bruce Springsteen. He was also the studio drummer into The Tonight Show. Dude was an absolute legend. And he used to bring his son to the Slipknot shows as well. Jay would have on a little mask and all that stuff. He was a massive fan ever since he was a little kid. So yeah, if I was 10 years old and a massive fan of Slipknot, and then about like 10, 15 years later, I was ending up playing for Slipknot, I too would also be kind of stoked about that. So it's definitely understandable. If we took a look at the second part of this, it says, I was heartbroken and blindsided to receive the phone call that I did on the morning of November 5th, the news of which most of you learned shortly after. So... What this means, this means that Jay, in essence, was fired from Slipknot the day that we found out and was basically got a phone call that said, hey, guess what? You're no longer in the band. Goodbye. It was probably a little bit more formal than that. But in essence, that's what happened. Something like that doesn't necessarily happen with, uh, you know, immediate action. This usually means that this has been a long time coming. And this usually means this is something that was thought out and planned. So depending on who was the... uh, creative directive in uh, starting this whole venture of, you know, removing him from the band. This could have been something that they were planning for months and months and months ahead of time or even years possibly, which means one thing, they really did do him dirty. And obviously he says he's been overwhelmed by the amount of love and support that he's received because yeah, everybody was freaking out because yeah, Jay is an absolutely awesome drummer and he carried over Jerry Jordison's energy absolutely fantastically. Let's go ahead and just read some of these comments that we have on here. We always got Mario Duplantier. He posted a couple of uh, a couple of hearts, obviously. We got The Baby Jay, which is Josh Miller with Darko US, formerly of Spite and Amure. He says, well said, Jay, keep crushing little fire emoji. Obviously, my good friend Aiden Storm. Go check out his YouTube channel. He's absolutely sick. Much love to you, Jay. I commented as well. They did you dirty, and they lost someone who was invaluable. If I was ever going to see Slipknot Live, it would have been to see you play. Not anymore. They messed up. Because I firmly believe that. I believe that they messed up. We've got Rock Feed News, who I went live with this past week. Nothing but love to you. You had an amazing tenure with the band, and the future of you will be very bright. we got Achilles Priester, the legend. I've been there before, brother, and I know how hard it is. But you're a badass drummer, and very young. I'm sure God never closed... I'm sure God never closed one door before open up much more opportunities. Keep it up. We got Ray Luzier from Corn spamming some heart emojis. I don't know that name, so we're just going to skip it. We've got SJC Drums, who sponsors Jay Weinberg. Nothing but love, Jay. We've got Josh Manuel, legend with a little white heart emoji. We got Tanner Wayne, who's another drummer. A bunch of heart emojis going on. There's some more that are on my phone I can go through and read that uh, basically a lot of drummers just decided to really pile on and give this man all the love and support that they need. I'll go ahead and just read a couple of them real quick. Trey Cool, the drummer for Green Day, said, I have so much admiration and respect for you, Jay. You are still yet to make the best music of your life. You are young. The future is yours and taking is yours for the taking. And I'm excited to see what you bring to the world next. You're truly a special drummer. We got Eloy Casagrande of Sepultura. You're one of the greatest drummers, Jay. It'll be a pleasure watching your next steps. Much love. So this means, honestly, that a lot of the drummers within the drumming community and within the uh, large sphere of the drumming community, they've all kind of just let this guy know, hey, listen, we still love you no matter what. We're not going to stop listening to you just because you left Slipknot or just because a better way to word it is that Slipknot kicked you out. He's obviously accrued a massive fan base, and he's pulling a lot of these fans away from Slipknot with him. It's very reminiscent of what happened to Joey Jordison. So now that we've reviewed these comments and we've reviewed kind of what's going on, let's talk about a couple things. That wording is very specific when he says that, uh, you know, he received that call on November 5th and then shortly thereafter, you guys all found out. This usually means that he got the phone call. They said, hey, by the way, you're not in the band anymore. And then they just basically posted after like an hour or so. Oh, yeah. By the way, Jane Weinberg's not in the band anymore. Thanks, guys. Proceeded to turn off comments on the post and then delete the post shortly thereafter. As a way to stay mysterious. I know that I mentioned last week as well that uh, there's only really like two or three shareholders in Slipknot that are in the band that really run everything. I didn't say who those people were and nor did I want to divulge that. But there are some folks in my comments section that did. Thank you for preventing me from getting into a lawsuit. You guys said the quiet part out loud and I appreciate that. But at the end of the day, we all kind of already knew who was running the scene. And the thing is that this is something that a lot of people within the YouTube sphere have jumped on already. Like for example... Immediately, everybody started asking, 
Ellis Depario Siberiano, also known as Jorge, are you going to be the next drummer for Slipknot? To which he replied, no. He thinks that he's not qualified enough to drum for Slipknot. And first of all, sir, you better take that back. You are overqualified. If they were to have you in the band, my God, they would take things back up to another level. They would start producing gold again. Ellis Depario said they should get Eloy Casagrande from Sepultura. And here's the thing. That makes plenty of sense. The dude's got absolute beastly power. He's got the same energy and vibe that Joey would have had. Now, do I think that they're going to do that? Probably not. They're probably going to find a different drummer and keep him masked and hidden and uh, anonymous just for the sake of the band. And, you know, even though the fans are going to find out within about a month, kind of like they did with Tortilla Man, you know, Mr. Uh, or Michael Pfaff or whatever his name is. I don't remember. We had Tank the Tech, who is another massive channel on here, who has a lot of connections inside the industry. A lot of connections, more connections than I have. And I have a surprising amount, <laughs> especially for my, you know, subscriber level and whatnot. I've made a lot of friends in some high places recently. And he has talked to people that have, you know, worked closely within the band. And they said that the, this is a long time coming, which is kind of a little bit of a foreshadowing that they had been planning this for a little bit. As far as to who the new drummer is, he's got no idea. None of us really do know. And I'm sure they're probably still hiring and looking around for people. As far as to how they do their auditions, I know that the way they do it is they basically say, oh, there's a band that's looking for an audition. You go in, you sign an NDA, and then they say, oh, by the way, you're auditioning for Slipknot. Uh, here's the list of songs they want you to start because that's how they hired Jay. And he discussed that, you know, in an interview a while ago. And the whole reason why they have you sign the NDA is because they don't want you to talk about that. They don't want you to put out the news and say, I auditioned for Slipknot. Because then that gives people the idea of, oh, this is the type of drummer that they're looking for. And you can kind of, you know, think of the rest from there. It's very easy to deduce who the drummer is just by finding out if one person auditioned for him. Because then they kind of find out, oh, this is the person they accepted the audition for. Maybe didn't take the audition of but they're probably looking for people within that sphere. It's not that hard to narrow it down if you get some information. The internet can do some amazing things. It doesn't take a 4chan audience to be able to deduce who Slipknot's drummer is. It just takes a couple of Instagram guys about, like, what, 10 minutes? Now, as far as to their motive for removing Jay, we still aren't aware of that. But I think it's definitely very interesting that they kicked him out in such, a, uh, such an unexpected way. You know, obviously him getting the phone call and then a couple hours later, they just post the statement. It's all very strange. More than likely, they probably already have a new drummer lined up. But as far as to their motive for it, we don't really know that for sure yet. They say it's for creative differences, but we already know that people say that a lot whenever uh, there are people who don't want to cooperate in the band. It's kind of a code word. It, it could literally mean anything from, oh, we actually had creative differences. You know, he wanted to go more death metal. We wanted to go more soft rock. So we decided, hey, you know what? We should probably part ways because this isn't going to work out. Or it could literally mean, yeah, we told this guy, hey, guess what? You're doing this. And he said, uh, no, I'm not. And we fired him. It's a very loose terminology. That's the problem. I have no doubts that Jay is going to find a band pretty soon here and they're going to absolutely take over the world. But the thing is, is that there's a lot of people that have been speculating that Jay was a problem child. I don't think that's the case. We had watched Tank the Tech's video about it recently and, uh, you know, Tank obviously had some inside people that he talked to, but he had a lot of people that have met Jay personally and hung out with him a lot and they said, yeah, the dude's a great guy. And then all the former bands are like, oh, he sucks, blah, blah, blah. You know, and in personal statements about those other bands, Jay said that he left them or, you know, he quit or whatnot because he didn't agree with the lifestyle choices they were making. More than likely meaning they were involved with drugs because Jay's been notoriously drug free. While yes, I did make a lot of assumptions about the band Slipknot, we can't exactly make assumptions that Jay was the problem child when we have overwhelming evidence that people say he's a great guy, super nice, super professional, and he shows up to gigs and all that, and he actually does a really good job, and he practices and everything. The overwhelming amount of evidence that we have in favor of him there much, much, much outweighs the salty obviously envious festered comments and statements from some of his former bandmates. Now that we have Jay's statement, I think it's kind of safe to assume that Slipknot kind of had been planning this for a little while and that they decided, you know what, we're just going to get rid of him in the most efficient way possible because we already know that they have a contract system and basically they decide whenever your contract is up or not. I don't think it's going to be much longer before people realize that these guys are a joke and yeah, they've definitely passed their prime. But that era is long gone. So I don't think it's going to be much longer before either they hang up the hats entirely and they quit the rodeo or before they come just such a joke that they're not really doing stadium tours anymore. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share your thoughts on Jay's statement, what you think it means, because definitely while it's all still shrouded in mystery, there's a lot, there is a lot that we still have to know. It's time to wrap this video up, so I'm just going to end it with a couple of words here. To Jay. Jay, you're a phenomenal drummer and inspiration to millions and your drumming has superseded that 
of anything that I possibly could have imagined. You you did fantastic in Slipknot. You definitely brought a lot of new life to that band. I think they did you dirty. I think that they should not have fired you. I don't think they should have gotten rid of you. I think that was probably one of the biggest mistakes they made. Regardless, whatever project you decide to go with, whatever new project you start, or whatever new band takes you on as their drummer, you're going to excel beyond their expectations. And you're going to bring in millions of new fans, and you're going to keep on inspiring millions of drummers to keep on doing what they're doing. To Slipknot, I say this. You know what they say uh, about the sinking ship? All the rats that are going to leave it? You know who's left on that sinking ship after everybody leaves? It's the captain. And the captain is bound by duty to stay upon the sinking ship. Just remember to think about that. Because I don't think you want to let it go there, guys. Massive L in my book.